Well, this is Larry W6WUH in California. This is my uh, SB200 linear amplifier. And I uh, guess I got this and uh, uh, went through it in uh, 2010, uh, 13 years ago. Been on the air uh, ever since. And uh, in 2018, I put in the uh, the Harbach uh, soft start board and the uh, power supply board, which of course made absolutely no difference to how the <laughs> amplifier performed at all. But uh, let's see. This is uh, this is November of 2023. So it's been in service for 13 years. Uh, been cleaned a couple of times uh, uh, during that time. I, I try to keep a cloth over it often to keep uh, dirt out of it, but uh, it's time to clean it again. Um, I had some kind of uh, problem that put it off the air. There was uh arcing herd and... Uh, the filament blew in the, one of my Citron tubes. I put a couple of used tubes in there and uh, when I key it up the uh, the plate current just goes uh, through the roof and there's no output. I suspect that this is a uh, DC blocking uh, coupling uh, cap, doorknob cap problem between the uh, uh, tubes in the, the PA and the antenna circuit somewhere but we'll see uh, but while I'm in here I'm uh, doing a little bit of, uh, of cleaning I, I looked at my band switch and I see that they're getting discolored so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing there here's the power supply you can see there's a little bit of dust in there but uh, basically the tidy I haven't cleaned this at all so uh, you know there's uh not a whole lot of dust or dirt in this thing. I think I cleaned this thing six months or a year ago. I can't remember. Well, I just took out a tube, but uh, in here we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go through with a damp rag uh, paper towel because you can see there's a little bit of, of dust that's uh, built up in here. Not very much, but a little bit. Just clean that up, and we'll get in here and we'll... Um, do the same thing with these uh, uh, wafers and, and uh, uh, contacts on the uh, on the uh, band switch for the tank circuit. Well, what we did is we uh, lifted the high voltage uh, here where it comes off of the RF choke, separating it entirely from the, uh, from the RF section of the amplifier. And uh, that isolated the uh, problem to the uh, power supply and metering circuit. And, uh, uh, measured all these uh, resistors with an ohmmeter and they're okay and uh, we're moving right along and we take a look in here and we this thing was kind of buried by the wiring but you can see that it is blown the uh, one ohm one percent uh, wire wound resistor and uh, that's uh, I haven't put the ohmmeter on it but you can see that it's uh, and uh, not uh, not been happy. Now I've got to check the uh, Harbach schematic against the Heathkit schematic because they do things a little bit differently. But if you uh, look in here at this schematic, uh, you'll find R9 right there. 
which is part of this, actually, part of this string. This is a string of uh, bleeder resistors all along here. And uh, according to this, it's just a bleeder across C8, but um, I don't think that's true. That says that's a 30K resistor. So that's not what... Uh, what R9 is. Here is a 1 ohm 5 watt resistor. They call it R12. And uh, here's R12 up here, which is uh, about uh, 40 megs. So uh, I've got to get the schematic for the uh, for the uh, Harbach resistor or Harbach board. But uh, clearly that's uh, part of this uh, voltage divider here, which uh, measures the uh, plate current. And uh, the plate current uh, is always reading, uh, you know, 600, 800 mils when there's no load on it. So uh, I think we've found uh, one problem at least. So I've got to find a, a one ohm. Uh, resistor that's uh, you know five, seven, ten watts to put in there, and uh, then we'll see uh, what we've got. Well, there it is, a Dale uh, three watt uh, one oh one percent resistor. Uh, the original. Uh, uh, Heathkit thing called for 5 watt. So, good old Harbach. Well now in order to replace this resistor I've got to uh, take these uh, two things loose and pull them out of the side because there's one solder uh, thing that I can't reach otherwise. So there's two, uh, two washers on this pot and uh, one on this switch. Well, that's annoying, but it's all to get to this uh, one little solder connection right there. So it's, these are the these are the two uh, things that got unsoldered, and of course it's soldered on both sides of the board. So I have to get a put a soldering iron on here and a needle nose on the other side and try to get them loose. Here's a good place to be careful. There's high voltage on this uh, high voltage board right here, and it's very close to this function switch. And also, these terminals on the switch are very close to the uh, uh, the frame here. So you just want to make sure that uh, that you get your lead dress uh, away from these high voltage terminals, and you're not going to short anything out when you slide this back in the cabinet. Obviously, we had B plus at the uh, at the RF choke. Um, there may be some other difficulty. I cleaned the uh, antenna relay, uh, burnished it and cleaned it with the uh, deoxidant, burnished it and cleaned it and blotted it again. So it should be okay. It functions all right. And if the uh, if the uh, TR relay functions, then uh, that means you've got a bias because it's uh, the relay current. Uh, the bias runs through the relay coil. So this part's all working okay again. I think what we'll do. Let's take a look at the uh, and it's still drawing about 50 watts which is just about what it should do. So what I'm going to do is turn this off let the uh, 
bleeders do their thing and uh, let the B plus decay. Slow. That's still uh, that's still almost a thousand volts on there after uh, forty-five seconds or so. So. Uh, Just because that the high voltage meter doesn't say anything, I wouldn't trust it. About the minimum reading on that thing is uh, about a thousand volts. <laughs> and that's enough to uh, knock you on your keister. Uh, discharge from those filter caps is uh, very high current, so uh, it would kill you could kill you. Alright, so I'll pull the plug here, stick the screwdriver in, uh, short all the uh, filter caps, make sure it's absolutely down to zero. Uh, put this uh, connection back on the uh, blocking capacitor and uh, we'll try it again. Okay, uh, we're looking at plate current. No drive, no load. 50, 60 mils. So the uh, bias is holding the plate current down just as it should. Look at the relative power meter, should be nothing. That's good. Look at the high voltage. Down to about 1900, which it should do. So I think we're good. Should be able to give this thing drive and expect to see it uh, work. Okay, so we got this thing uh, set up uh, on the uh, 40 meter antenna. Uh, got the tuner adjusted for zero SWR. Got the exciter uh, adjusted for 20 watts of drive. Uh, the uh, Plate voltage about uh, 2100 or so. So what we're going to do is uh, key this thing up. So we're getting 20 watts of drive and we're getting a couple hundred watts of uh, output here. In fact, we're pinning the needle on the 200 watt scale. Tuning and loading normally. About 1950 B plus under load. Grid currents barely coming up off of the, the mark. So I think what we'll do now is increase the drive. And uh, see what happens. Okay, we're up to 54 watts of drive and a retune. Seeing 500 watts of output, 50 watts of drive. So I think these tubes are going to be pretty happy. Run the drive up some more.
There's 95 watts of drive, we'll retune. Oh boy, look at that, lots of output. Got my glasses on, but it's close to 700 watts. I gotta get a better, better light on this thing. All right. So there's just about 700 watts, 650, 700 watts. I'm going to play with the drive here. Well, it'll keep going up. It'll go up to 700 if you drive it with 100. It's 100 watts of drive. Come back to 600 watts output. 82 watts of drive. So those old tubes would never do that. The most they would do with 550. You can see the line voltage is dropping here. You can see the filament uh, dimming. You got to drop it down to 600 watts. 80, 83 watts of drive. Six hundred watts of output. Okay, so what we got is the uh, amplifier working again. Uh, the new tubes are uh, considerably healthier than the old ones. Uh, we're getting 600 watts PEP output with uh, 80 watts of drive. Uh, we can drive it up to uh, 700 watts output with, uh, with uh, 100 watts of drive, but I don't think there's any point in it. My line... Uh, Voltage is sagging a little bit. I guess I'm not plugged into the uh, the right outlet. I've got a better outlet here. Uh, and see the filaments dim a little when I uh, when I hit it hard. But I'll uh, plug it into the uh, the outlet that's meant for the linear amplifier, and it should probably quit doing that. But anyway, everything is working fine. Uh, grid current is in the normal range. Uh, Tuning is normal, output is extremely good, uh, power supply is holding steady, uh, no problems at all. So I think what caused this was, I think I just simply had a, a tube failure where we had a, I don't know, probably a filament to grid short or, uh, you know, a grid to plate short or something. It wiped out a tube and uh, wiped out a... Uh, resistor in the metering circuit in the uh, power supply board and uh, that's those are the only things I could find wrong so I replaced that resistor put a new set of tubes in here which I'm very happy with <laughs> a pair of tail used Taylor tubes making full output this thing's running at 70% uh, efficiency which it has not done for low many 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 years it's been running at uh, 550 watts outputs as much as we've been able to coax out of it with 100 watts of drive and now we can get 700 out of it so we've backed the drive back off we'll stay at the 600 watt output level which is fine and uh, I'll plug this into a uh, a more robust outlet circuit it's plugged into a light circuit now and I've got a uh, dedicated 20 amp uh, uh, 120 circuit over there. I'll plug it in there and uh, I think it should uh, be very happy. So I'm pleased.